what's going on people so in today's video i'm going to explain the time method of console the time method is a tool that allows you to measure the time it takes for a section of code or process to execute it's great for identifying performance bottlenecks to start the time method you'll want to pass in a label this will be a unique identifier to stop keeping track of time you can follow the time method with the time end method then pass in that same label that unique identifier by using a combination of these two methods, you can check to see how long some process takes. For example, I will create a for loop that's going to loop 1 million times. Let i equal 0. Continue this as long as i is less than 1 million. Then i++. plus plus. It doesn't really matter what we do here. Do some code here. We're just going to loop a million times. So I can see how long this process takes. Wherever I would like to start this timer, I will use console.time. I will want to pass in some sort of label, some unique identifier, let's say test. Wherever I would like to stop the timer, I will again use console, but instead use the time end method and pass in that same label. Within our console, it's gonna show us how long this process is gonna take between when we start and when we end. To get from here to here, it took 0.9 milliseconds. If I were to increase the amount of iterations, this time is going to go up. For me to loop 10 million times, that took 3.8 milliseconds. 100 million is 34 milliseconds. Let's try a billion. 338 milliseconds. Using the time method could be useful within a function. We will create a function to load some data. We're just going to pretend to load some data, but don't actually do it. Again, I will use a for loop. We're just pretending to load data. Let i equal zero. We'll iterate this loop like a billion times. Then i plus plus pretend to load some data. If I would like to measure how long this function takes, in order to identify any bottlenecks, I will use the time method of console. Console.time. I'll need a unique label. I'll use the name of the function within quotes as a unique identifier. Then when this function ends, I will follow this with the time and method of console and pass in that same label. Then we'll need to execute this function. Let's pretend that our program is running really slow for some reason. I can test each part of my program one function at a time. Let's see how long the loaded data function takes. 338 milliseconds. That could be a little or a lot depending on what you're doing. But here we're just pretending to load some data. Let's create a function to process some data. Function process data. We are just going to pretend to process some data. Let i equal zero. Let's loop through i one million times. Then i plus plus. Pretend to process some data. If I would like to measure how long this function takes, I will use console.time, pass in a unique label, for example, the function name as a string. Then we will end this timer. Console.time end. Pass in that same label. Then we will execute this function. All right, let's see how long these functions take. If I'm looking at both of these functions and trying to identify any bottlenecks, it looks like the load data function is taking a lot longer than the process data function. In our make believe scenario, We've noticed that our load data function has taken quite a bit of time. That's where the time method could be helpful. All right, everybody, that is the time method. It's a tool that allows you to measure the time it takes for a section of code or process to execute. It's great for identifying performance bottlenecks. And well, everybody, that is the time method in JavaScript.